Welcome to Circuit 42. Circuit 42. The one-stop location for all things geek. This episode is brought to you by our sponsors, Dragon's Lair San Antonio and Gotham Newsstand. Sit back, relax, and most importantly, enjoy another episode of Circuit 42. Circuit 42. Hey everybody and welcome to the newest episode of Pass the Popcorn. I'm Ian and I am here with special guest, uh, film director Russell Emanuel. Hey, how you doing? And at and special actor guest Michael. Oh yes, come on, man! You said it. You said it once. You got it. <laughs> come on. I just I had to do it. I had to do it after what we talked. We were talking about earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and they are here to talk about their new movie, Occupants. Yes, sir. Well, thank you for having us. Yeah, we appreciate it, man. Thank you. Definitely. Um, for those who don't know, and the dog. Um, who are you and what do you do? Uh, well, my name is, again, Russ Emanuel. I'm uh, the director of the film. Um, it's called Occupants. And uh, Occupants is a film we completed um, in December, December 2015. We had a, a private screening with the cast and the crew at the Writers Guild of America in Los Angeles. And right now what we're doing is um, – uh, we're trying to get, uh, I guess, the word out, whether it's by uh, our trailer, which has won uh, several awards, or um, submitting to film festivals, which we have yet to hear back from, or comic book conventions. Um, we're going to go to Florida Supercon um, in July, and um, Robert Picardo, who's one of our actors, is also going to be there. And... Um, yeah, we're just trying to get the word out. We also have a comic book campaign uh, tie-in to the film. So, you know, we're just trying to franchise it. But it's basically uh, a found footage film in the science fiction horror category. And it's 81 minutes, and it's about a young couple um, named Annie and Neil Curtis. Annie Curtis is played by Brianna White, and uh, Neil Curtis is played by Michael. What's your last name? Pugliese. There you go. <laughs> Pugliese. Michael Pugliese, uh, who plays uh, Neil Curtis. And they discover a parallel version of themselves while um, they shoot, or they're shooting a documentary. And they set up cameras all over their house. So, um, and they played, a, uh, Michael and Brianna played their parallel selves also, which was quite interesting to do uh, because they look completely different. Now, what happens is, um, over time, they're able to interact with the, this couple, and it turns out that this couple aren't very nice people. So it's kind of like uh, a psychological horror. You know, basically, uh, Annie and Neil Curtis, they're very loving to each other, and they're very nice people, but they start doubting themselves and each other because they see their parallel versions are not nice. And they consult the Robert Picardo character. His name is Dr. Alan Peterson uh, via Skype, which is funny because we're talking via Skype. And um, and uh, he's like um, half a world away. Basically, he's in Sri Lanka and they're in Los Angeles. So, you know, he's trying to be their mentor, if you will. But over time, uh, I guess uh, things take a very horrific turn. And that's all I can say right now. That sounds really interesting, and it it's funny because you look at movies like um, you look at like the Bailey had found footage like long before like Blair Witch or movies like um, you know Cannibal Holocaust, Last Broadcast, Blair Witch, and how things have changed as the technology has changed. And perfect example, I told I was I was talking telling my friend who they said that they just refused to watch any any. Um, Found footage movies. I told them watch Chronicle. Yeah, we, yeah, because they said that their whole problem was the fact that they always feel cheap. And he's a, he's a videographer, cinematographer. And I said, if you want to see how you can do really strong cinematography, really strong shots through a found footage movie, that's the movie. That that movie right there. And there's like so much to the genre, and people only see think of Blair Witch. Yeah. Well, I mean, and in all due fairness, Blair Witch did start this trend, so... I, yeah, I guess and it still holds up really well. It, it does. You know, it's, what, 17 years old now? But it does hold up. I, I do agree. I mean, we were more... Um, I was more inspired by maybe Paranormal Activity or uh, Cloverfield. Cloverfield, especially for 
kind of like this viral campaign that we're doing with the comic book, um, they did the same thing. And it was very interesting in my book. You know, they did their, I think it was called Slush O Cola, supposedly a Japanese company, and they just spread it all over the internet. And they had little, like, uh, people record these videos, kind of testimonials. Well, we did, we did the same thing. So, you know, uh, I found that very uh, intriguing. So when I was able to do Occupants, um, uh, it was my producer, Howard Nash. And Howard's a great guy. Um, this is my uh, fourth feature film with him. And coincidentally, it's also my fourth feature film with Robert Picardo. But um, he's the one who uh, got the script from our uh, writer, a brilliant writer named Julia Camera. And, um, you know, and then I, I saw the script. I'm like, we got to do this. And, um, you know, over, when did we get it? I guess February 2014, and we shot in September of 2014. So over those months, you know, I, I was definitely rewatching like Paranormal Activity or Cloverfield or Blair Witch Project just to get an idea. Um, and I, I just, something about Cloverfield, it just really inspired me. So that's why we're doing what we're doing today. Now, quick question, like with you, with uh, for, quick question for uh, both of you, uh, Michael, have you worked with um, have you worked with Russ before, or is this the first time working on a movie with him? And if if so, how did you guys f- find out about each other and start working on projects together? Uh, this was that. Sorry, uh, what was that second question? Um, like, how did you guys end up working together on your projects? It was um, this was the, the our first project that we actually worked together. Uh, yeah, I I'm working on a film. Well, I I worked on a film called Tiger. It's a boxing film that I co-wrote uh, with one of the executive producers of Occupants, uh, Prem Singh. Um, we were involved in a in a project called Tiger, and um, one of the producers on board, Howard Nash, um, who's also the the head producer of Occupants, introduced myself and Prem to Russ, and we flew down to LA. We had a nice little dinner, and we uh, we got to know each other a little bit. I did a couple of readings for him, and uh, uh, that's how I got the part here for Occupants. And um, this was our first film. I, Russ is an awesome guy. He knows exactly what he wants. Thank uh, you. He, he, yeah, no, it, it's it's the truth, man. And uh, and we had a blast on set, man. He's he's a he's a great guy. The whole the whole team was was just was awesome. So um, it was it was a blast working on set with everybody, and uh, yeah, I had a great time. Now, other question: Having you know, having come from a writing background as well, uh, do you think that infu- that do you think that influences you as an actor? You know, having to have that having to have that experience. Um, it, it depends, right? It depends when I um when I tend to write, uh, it does because as I write my scenes, I uh, I picture myself acting or or any any other actor being present or grounded or uh, becoming and embodying this 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 character that I'm I'm putting on the page. But uh, for this for this film in particular, Occupants, uh, it was it, it was just deeply deeply layered. Um, she's she's really yeah. good at, at at really creating um, a really in depth character, especially because we had to play two. Brianna and myself had to play um, a parallel version of ourselves and a normal version of ourselves. So it's um, it, it it just really enticed me and, and really got me attracted to this this particular screenplay because who doesn't want to play two of the different yet yeah, same people it was just very very interesting to me and uh, she's she's great at what she does so um, in this film it just kind of lured me in just because of the premise and the and the idea of the whole thing and then hearing Russ how excited and, and, and pumped he was about it just you know helped me just want to be on board that much that much more now, question well, with what you were talking about regarding the performance playing two different, you know, two parallel characters, that definitely yeah. requires a new dynamic when it comes to the performance. Uh, what, yeah. What, for, what was that like for that? What was it like for that? And what do you do to get ready for that? Yeah, it was um, lucky for us because uh, we shot all of the one character first, so the first, you know, couple, the first, you know, couple of uh, X amount seven of days, days were seven yes, days. the first seven days. Thanks, for us. The first seven days were based on that one character. Um, and then it was just kind of, we had like six hours or a couple hours because Brianna uh, got her hair dyed darker. Uh, she's blonde, so she got her hair dark. Uh, that black eye went out and I got a, you know, I shaved my beard. I, had a, I grew out my beard for a couple months, so I got that shade. I cut my hair, so I was, I was so we had, a couple, we had a couple hours in between to kind of uh, switch the gears a little bit and um, 
embody somebody else. So it was much easier in that way. Um, so yeah, we had a couple of hours to just kind of be on our own and and figure out um, what had to be done. And and I know a lot of different scenarios. Like uh, there's a film called Enemy or uh, Legends where um, where people embody two different characters, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and uh, Tom Hardy in, in two separate films. And uh, I, I think they were filmed in the same location at the same time. It's much harder. I would I would feel when you just get like a quick you know uh, wardrobe change, makeup change, and you're you have to beat somebody else. So kudos to those guys. But we had a couple hours uh, in between both to um, to really you know tune in tune in these next characters that we were about to play him and, and embody. Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, one of the uh, question I had for you, Russ, uh, regarding mm-hmm. the uh, direction, have you worked in found footage before? Or was the first time doing this? And if so, what was it like? That was my first time. Um, you know, I'm uh, uh, I, I've done different genres. Uh, my first feature film was called PJ. Um, had John Hurd and uh, Robert Picardo and Vinny Pastore. That was kind of a, that was dramatic. That was like a drama. Uh, my second film was more. Uh, it's called Chasing the Green with uh, Jeremy London and Ryan Hurst and Bill Devane, and that was like a biopic. And the third film, The Legends of Nathia, that had Picardo in a main role. That was more like, um, I guess, um, like a fantasy film in the sense of, uh, what is that? Um, oh, come on. Um, uh, the Princess Bride, where a grandfather tells his grandson a story. So, yeah, yeah those were more, those are narrative films. You know, in a narrative kind of a film, you have your shots like a wide shot medium shot close up you could do a dolly and whatnot so when i got to occupants of course it's nothing like that <laughs> a lot of the a lot of the shots the cameras are static because it's about um annie curtis she's a documentarian and she's setting up cameras all over her house um so it's different. It's very different. And I know Michael could attest to this too because there are no insert shots, you know, uh, like uh, you, you can't cut to a close-up or you can't cut to, uh, I don't know, an insert shot of uh, a painting on the wall. Um, it was It's different. And uh, so yeah, I totally. had to think outside the box, you know. Um, and definitely when it came to performance too, we did, uh, did a lot of rehearsals. We had to. Because they were literally there in these white shots, static white shots. And these shots would last, I don't know, sometimes several minutes. Um, now, in the editing, and our editor was also our DP, his name is Emil Harris. Um, and I have worked with this guy for a good 12 years. Um, but what we decided was, uh, because we also show parallel footage, parallel as in the parallel universe footage, the cut points are these glitches, and they're both visual and audio glitches. So if we need to cut, let's say, to a different take, then we glitch to the parallel world and we glitch back, and we use that as, as our editing device. So that is one thing that I was thinking of in uh, pre-production, since I've never done the, a found footage film before. And, you know, you have to think about this, because... You, you need cut points. I mean, you just need it. It's, it's, not, it's just not going to happen without cut points. And it's also going to be boring without cut points. So, you know, that was, um, I guess, uh, one thing. Uh, um, oh, what was it? Um, you know, I, it's, uh, it, it's, it's interesting. You know, I, I like how, um, you, know, uh, you know, Michael played two different characters. And what I did was I, um, uh, just like in a narrative film, I created a backstory. Uh, for his character and Brianna's character, uh, both for the real version and the parallel version. And I think, uh, if you remember, Mike, while you were, while uh, while you guys were transforming, I gave you uh, backstories as to why the parallel version turned out the way they did versus the real version. And this backstory never makes it into the film, but it helps the actors to uh, acclimate, I guess, to the role and make it more natural. So, you know, I did bring in kind of the narrative uh, filmmaking uh, directorial style into this found footage. You know, it, it, it does work. I mean, it, it's still a feature film, you know. Exactly. Um, 
quick question. Like, looking at your work, like, one of the first things you did was a short called Star Trek Hidden Identities. That was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, that was back in 1995. But um, yeah. you've also mentioned you have, that you've worked regularly with Robert Picardo, and I was wondering yes. if there's any connection between that and you eventually were making that cream that working relationship with Picardo. You know, it's very interesting. In the, that was, by the way, a high school project. I was, like, 17 when I did that. Awesome. And then looking back, it's very bad. <laughs> but <laughs> but it seemed to have, have impressed people, uh, you know, at my school because they founded this uh, cinema, I guess, a, a, not a cinema program, but, a, you know, a cinema class based on what I did. So I am kind of happy about that. But what was funny is I – ended up buying two Star Trek outfits for that project that I did when I was 17 in 1995. And one of them happens to be Robert Picardo's outfit. So you're saying that you bought them for the project and you totally oh. didn't have them laid around. Yeah, and I I did not know Picardo yet. I would not meet him until 2006. So I don't know. Maybe it was fortuitous or something. But yeah. Um, I met him in 2006 uh, through Howard Nash, and Howard Nash is the one who was friends with him. So, again, without Howard Nash, I would not be here today. I would not know. Uh, and, you know, Michael, you're um, a Prem Singh, right? He and I and Howard have worked together, I think, on PJ and Chase in the Green. That's how I met Prem initially. Yeah, that's right. So, um, and Prem is a friend of Howard's. So, again, it's all Howard. Howard, Howard, Howard. He's the one who. Um, I, it's just I'm just really grateful to have met, to have met him in the. Um, what was it? It was through another friend, and we met at a bar on the Sunset Strip in the Sunset Strips in Hollywood, and it was just a chance meeting. My friend's like, "Hey, Russ, just come on here and just meet this guy named Howard." You know, we met in 2004, and I guess we kept in touch uh, two years later, and we made PJ, and now we're on occupants. So. Uh, Picardo, you know, I mean, he's just a really great guy to work with. Um, he did, you know, four feature films for us, and he did a documentary called uh, Restoration of Paradise about the uh, Bolsa Chico wetlands, which is uh, a local thing here where I live in Huntington Beach, California. And it, as a little in-joke, what we did in Occupants is uh, we kind of mentioned the documentary that Bob and I both did. <laughs> It, it's a it's a little in joke, you know. As a director, I like to put in like little gags, if you will. Um, yeah, like little so hidden that was things. one of them. Hmm? Yeah, like little in jokes for people paying attention. Yeah, it's it. You know, most people won't get it, but I I, I think one thing about making a film is you got to have some fun, and that's part of the fun is doing that. Another one is uh, his character name is Peterson. Well, I've been using the Peterson name since Girl with Gun. Uh, that was 10 years before that. That was my short film. Um, that got me the funding for the feature. Well, half the funding. And I just carried it on because I just thought it was amusing. So that's like little end jokes. So one of the things that a lot of people don't realize, especially since you know a lot, of, a lot of our listeners tend to see a lot of Hollywood movies, they don't know as much behind the scenes in terms of distribution, it is a very different situation when you're trying to get distribution for a movie as opposed to, you know, just be able to go out there and have a studio picture that goes out there. Like, I, what did I tell someone once? We were talking about Fox Searchlight, and I said, it's Hollywood making a movie that they think looks like an indie movie and telling everyone it's an indie movie. Yeah. But um, with something like with a situation like this, uh, would you be able to describe? Would you be able to describe to your listeners what it's like? you know, getting that movie out there, getting distributed, and the kind of the process of it. Total chaos. <laughs> it, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. But I like it. It's, it's fun for me. Um, you know, we, um, I, I mean, I mentioned this before, but, uh, you know, we, we submitted our trailer to various film festivals, and it has gotten into, uh, I don't know, eight or nine of them now. And won several awards. And I, by the way, I never knew before this. Hey, Russell. Yes. Um, start over one more time because um, I don't know why, but you sound like you were under water for a minute. Um, yeah, I hear that oh. too. Sorry. Not, not a problem. You were you sounded fine before. Did you accidentally move your mic or your headset or anything? No, no, no. Um, here. Is this better? Uh, yeah. sounds about the same. Oh, really? 
Hold on. Let me move. Okay. I'm on a wireless connection. There you go. That sounds you? better. That's perfect. Oh, really? Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, then I'll speak here. Okay. okay. So basically start the answer from the beginning so we could use that for editing. What was the question again? Basically asking you to tell people a little bit about uh, independent distribution and how it works right. differently than um, a regular film that's being released. Okay. Well, you know, um, the way I would describe the process, it's uh, pure chaos. But it's controlled chaos. Um, and you have to plan ahead. So we know that, you know, we have to shop it around. Uh, and we, as in Howard Nash and I, the producer. So we discussed how to do that. And even before the film was completed in December, uh, we did this trailer. And it's gotten very positive reception. So we decided decided to uh, submit it to various festivals just to get the word out there you know I mean it's it's, a, it's just a trailer but at the same time because it got a positive reception uh, it helps people to say oh what's this film about and let's go to their website and let's go check it out and everything so it's kind of like um, uh, with the calm before the storm or something like that you know we just uh, want to just uh, make people ready when we actually uh, showed them the film. So at the same time, um, I've been submitting to Comic Cons, they're called, they're comic book conventions, because we do have Robert Picardo of Star Trek Voyager. And a lot of these conventions, they have Star Trek people as guests. So what I did is I cold called uh, by phone, by email, and by Facebook, 63 of them. And some of them responded. And one of them I was just at is called Farpoint Convention, which is a, uh, a Star Trek convention that's been in existence for 23 years. And that was in Maryland. So, you know, uh, and we got a very positive reception for, about, uh, for the film, which I was very, very happy about. Um, so we have those type of events. And I mentioned Florida Supercon that's coming up. And that has 51,000 people that attended last year. And Robert Picardo will be there, too to uh, help rep the film. So uh, we're doing that as a way to, um, you know, get, just get the word out. Um, at the same time, um, I decided since we're dealing with parallel universes, and basically with parallel universes, you have an infinite number of possibilities, um, I said, why not try a comic book tie-in? You know, see how that, you see if we can do something with that. And that could help to get the word out there about the film. And I did that through uh, my associate producer, who's all into comic books. His name is Eric Kask. And we hired a uh, Marvel and DC comics artist named Dave Beatty, who's his friend. And we just started our campaign two weeks ago on Indiegogo, and we're already at 60%. So we're doing all this. All of this is tied together to hopefully whet people's appetites when we, um, you know, hopefully get into the middle to higher tier film festivals. And maybe distributors will be there at the higher tiered one. The, uh, higher tiered ones, they are. But even if they're not, we do have our previous distributors um, who did our um, our previous feature films, PJ, Chasing the Green, and Nathaya. And they know about this project. So we're just trying to make this as, I guess, lucrative as possible so that when we actually go to them or they come to us, we're like, here's what we have. It's an award-winning film. It's been in this film festival. We did a successful campaign here as a comic book tie-in, and it has franchise possibility. And that's how, I guess, our modus operandi, our MO, uh, that's our thinking. That's what we decided to do um, before the film was done. So I guess getting back to your question, how do you go about to do this? Well, it's, that's how we did it. There are so many different ways to get an independent film out there, but this is how we thought was the most logical. It makes sense, though, because you know, you're getting out in as many places as possible. You're being careful about where you get out and making sure that there is a connection. Because you know, you go to, I've been to some shows where it's like, what does this have to do with the convention that I'm at? Yes. But and that actually just pushes people away. Mm -hmm. But with what you're doing by having the Star Trek connection, by having the comic book connection, it makes perfect sense because you're looking at areas where it has a logical connection. Well, we hope so. We hope people see it that way. 
Um, you know, and it, it's fun, actually. It's kind of fun doing what we're doing. And I'm very grateful about the reception we have gotten so far. So, I mean, I'm just really grateful to you, to Mike, to just everybody who's associated with this project or who are interested in this project. I'm just I'm just glad things are going well so far. And if, now, um, was there anything else that you want to talk about with the um, with the movie regarding the movie before we bring the project to a close? Either one of you, or the interview to a close. I'm sorry. Uh, Mike, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, the, uh... Did Did you have anything else that you want to talk about before, uh, regarding the movie or regarding your other works before we brought the show to a close? Uh. No, everything, uh, it was pretty much, uh, it was, it was spoken about. I know, um, I'm sure Russ has a lot on the goal, like he, like he said, he's speaking about the, uh, the, uh, crowd, the crowdfunding and the, uh, the comic book, which I'm really excited about, so if everybody could just go and, uh, if you're listening to this and you're interested, go on the Facebook page, the, uh, uh what, what's the Occupants movie Facebook page? What? Well, there is a, there is Occupants the Movie, I think. But what you could go to is OccupantsTheMovie.com, and there is a link to everything on there. Yeah, so, that's so you go, go on that website. Exactly. Yeah, go, go on that website. You'll find everything that we spoke about. You can find the links to the, uh, you know, the comic book campaign. You can find every every update uh, from now, from the, the beginning of, you know, this movie when it started, and even up until... Uh, You'll, you'll be able to watch it in the movie theater, so you could you could go on uh, that website and you could find everything you need to find. Oh, you only really say that because you're a comic book character now, <laughs> which is pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet, man. <laughs> it's pretty cool. No, but other than that, I have nothing to say. It was just uh, it's been a pleasure to be on the show. Thank you for having us. Uh, I enjoyed my time, and uh, yeah, definitely. Thank you guys for coming on the show. This was a lot of fun, and it was kind of a cool surprise because uh, you guys approached me, which is always flattering. Yeah, because. Well, well, I'll, t- I'll tell you, Ian. I'll tell you, Ian. Um, I'm very grateful that you had us on your program. Um, it's it's all it, you're talking about how do you promote our uh, project? Well, it takes people like you to help us to promote. So I'm very grateful that you agreed. Yeah, definitely. Um, so thank you. Definitely. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I guess. I guess just to tell um, everybody out there, yeah, just expect um, the film to be released around the summertime. That's what we're aiming for right now. And you can find all the information, whether it's the film, the comic book, or whatnot, at occupantsthemovie.com. Awesome. Well, with that, let's bring, well, with that, um, let's bring the newest episode of Pasta Popcorn to a close. Uh, these are you've been tonight. We've had Russell Emanuel. And Michael Pugliese on the show tonight. Thank you again for coming on, guys. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. All right, and make sure to keep listening, make it, keeping that popcorn, and see the movies in the goddamn theaters. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, you. You're welcome. You've been listening to Circuit 42, brought to you by Dragon's Lair San Antonio and Gotham Newsstand. Join us for our next episode for all things geek. Circuit 42.